G'day, it's Darren from Everything Micro FPV, and this is the Beta FPV Meteor 75. This year they've moved away from the traditional FR Sky D8 and D16 receiver that's built directly onto the all-in-one flight controller. They've switched it over to Express LRS. You're going to be using a whoop that comes with an onboard receiver where the range of the radio link is actually going to outrun the range of the video link. Now, Beta FPV have also upped the power output capabilities of the VTX, which now outputs 350 milliwatts. It does come with an F4 all-in-one, which is rated at 1S for 5 amps. Pre-flash with Beta Flight 4.3, and it also has RPM filtering on it by default. In terms of motors, it is using 0802 SE 19,500 kV motors with the Gem Fam 40mm fly blade props, and they fly really well, and it is a great combination. Now, when you do buy the Meteor 75, not only do you get the quad itself, but it comes in this handy little case. And inside of the case, you get two batteries, some spare props, a screwdriver to be able to take off the canopy, the USB cable as well as a USB charger. Is the charger also doubles as a voltage tester? You simply plug in the battery and on the LED display, it is gonna give you the current voltage of the battery. When it comes to binding the Express LRS edition of the Media 75, if your Express LRS setup is using a binding phrase, and I'd highly recommend you do that. What you actually need to do is convert your binding phrase into UID bytes. The easiest way to do this is go to the SPI receivers page on the Express LRS website and go down to the UID generator where you can type in your binding phrase and that's going to generate your binding phrase in UID bolts. It's also going to give you the text that you can copy and paste into the CLI with Betaflight to set this up and get it going. Once you've set your binding phrase and hit save, then any Express LRS transmitter that you're running, as long as it's 2.4 gigahertz, that has the same binding phrase, when you power that up, this is going to connect and you're going to be able to go and rip. In terms of how this flies, it is a really solid performer. Indoor performance where you're not subject to wind is where this is really going to show its strengths and its capabilities. I was out flying on a really windy day and it still performed reasonably well, especially considering we're running fly blade prop. Now, Beta FPV does say you get up to six minutes of flight time. However, I'd probably suggest that that's only going to occur if your VTX is turned down to 25 milliwatts and not cranked all the way up to the 350 milliwatts it's capable of doing. It's just pure mathematics. I was running at 200 milliwatts and getting around four minutes of flight time, and I was able to stretch one flight out to about five as well. In terms of price, this does come in at just under 165 US dollars, which is certainly great value for money for what you get. So I guess that leads us to the question of whether or not you should buy it. I think the value proposition of this quad certainly stacks up from a flight performance, a flight time, and also a radio control link. Now, if you are looking for a new whoop and you're already in and you're already using BT 2.0 and you have a whole bunch of batteries, then this should be an absolute no-brainer, especially if you're all also using Express LRS. However, if you're already in PH 2.0, I'd still recommend you buy the quad, but just replace the pigtail because I think this flies really well and it is a great package overall. So that's everything for me. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it. Thank you.